ang objective ng pag-segregate ng cost or ng um, elements ng mixed cost is para ma-estimate mo yung amount na linear siya doon sa cost function equation natin. Meron tayong cost function equation for mixed cost. This is y is equal to a plus b x. Why there is the total cost and then um, a is equal to the fixed cost in total to ha. And then b is the variable cost per unit. Yung x, yun yung cost driver. Or siya yung pinaka independent variable na nagda-drive sa cost. Ito yung for example, this is the level of activity, no? Yun. Yung high-low method, mabilis siya. Quick and easy nga siya, sabi, na method para ma-determine natin yung variable cost and yung fixed cost na nasa mixed cost natin. Part siya ng um, pag-consider sa historical data mula sa mga iba pang uh, periods, di ba? Kasi sabi, high and low. Ibig sabihin, gagamit tayo, for example, uh, for the whole year. So, from January to December. Ang gagawin mo is to first find the slope of the line. Ang slope of, of the line is letter B. Letter B is our variable cost per unit. So, how to find it? Gagamitin natin yung formula na y is equal to a plus bx. Well, we're not going to find b mo here. So, letter b ang hahanapin natin. And, start tayo with the changes in the cost. So, yung cost ng highest na production level, isusubtract mo dun yung cost ng lowest. And then, over them, ang divisor is the change in the activity level. So, kung magkano yung, kung ilang units yung highest, so subtract mo sa kanya yung units ng lowest and then divide na. Or proceed to division. Tapos makukuha mo dun yung unit cost, variable cost per unit mo. Tapos, magagamit mo si variable cost per unit para makuha mo si fixed cost or total fixed cost ng buong production mo. But this is just an estimate, no? We're not sure if this is really accurate. Tapos, um, to get letter A, ang gagawin is to multiply, ang gagawin naman nating formula is A is equal to Y minus B multiplied to X. So, syempre, uh, multiply muna natin si X kasi meron tayong PEMDAS. No? So, multiply natin. Tapos, pag nakuha na natin yung amount ng total variable cost natin. So, subtract natin siya from the total cost, which is Y, and then makukuha na si letter A. Then, you can formulate your cost formula, or the cost function, the linear cost function formula, or equation. Let's have, for example, Myrex Corporation. So, meron siyang mga following data for the past six months ng 2020. So, for January, meron siyang 115,000 units and the total cost is 425,000. While for February, meron siyang 75,000 units and 300,000 peso cost. Sa March, meron siyang 50,000 units and then 220,000 yung total cost. Sa April, meron siyang 105,000 na units, tapos 375,000 naman yung cost. While May, nakaproduce ng 95,000 units, tapos meron siyang 350,000 na total cost. And dung June, meron din na 140,000 units, tapos 490,000 ang total cost. So, if we're, we're going to analyze or we're going to look for the highest amount of units produced, makikita natin is 140, no? 140,000 units ang pinaka mataas na units or number of units na na-produce nila. And, you have to take note din na hindi tayo dapat 
uh, mag-consider ng pinakamataas na production cost or operation cost or whatsoever cost. Basta, ang titingnan natin is the level of production or the level of activity. Yun yung i-consider mo kasi mas magiging inaccurate ang ang answer mo or ang makukuha mong cost estimations kung ang i-consider mo is the highest cost or the highest amounts. Dapat dun tayo sa level ng production mag-focus. Then, the lowest level is 50,000. So, you'll, uh, you'll already have there your formula or your equation. So, variable cost per unit is equal to 490 less 220,000 over 140,000 units less 50,000 units. Then, your variable cost per unit or per unit will be computed by dividing 270,000 pesos over 90,000 units. So, there you go. You, you will have your variable cost per unit which is 3 pesos. Yung 3 pesos na yun, gagamitin mo to calculate your fixed cost. Your total fixed cost is 490,000. And then, meron kang uunahin. You have to multiply 3, which is your variable cost per unit, by 140,000 units, which is your highest level of activity, no? Tapos, 490,000 less 420,000 pesos. Obviously, 70,000 pesos is your fixed cost in total. Tapos, ang gagawin mo, Pwede mo rin naman gamitin yung lowest activity level and the lowest cost dun sa pag-compute ni letter A or ni fixed cost. Kasi pareho lang yung lalabas. If you will check it, no? Pareho lang. Tapos, after nun, you can um, already state the results in your equation form. So, Y is equal to 70,000 pesos plus 3X. Yun. Then, Bigay pa tayong isa. Another example is Mr. Sakalam, controller of ABC Hospital, would like to come up with a cost formula na nagli-link sa emergency department costs of um, to the number of patients admitted during a month. Yung emergency department, ito ang mga cost niya at ang number ng patients na admit during the past 9 months of operation. So, start with April. Meron siyang 36 patients and 31,200 department cost. Nung May, 38 patients and 30,400 pesos. June is 34 patients, 27,400. July is 30, 29,200. August 30, 28,600 September, 22 patients, 26,400 October, 22 patients, and 25,600 Then, November, 96 patients and 145,000 December is 32 patients and 28,000 peso departmental cost Now, mapapansin natin, 96 is the highest number of patients na na-admit nila during the period. But, just like what I've said earlier, pag merong within the relevant range, yun ang i-consider mo. Meron kang outside na. Kasi, 36, 38, 34, 30, 20, 22. Ganyan. Tapos, biglang 96. So, this is an outlier. When we say outlier, this is um, an incidental. Hindi siya dapat i-consider. Ang treatment siya, sa kanya is i-ignore siya at hindi siya isama sa analysis or dun sa estimation dahil again, hindi magiging accurate yung results mo. An outlier is um, ano ba? Basta i-ignore siya dapat kasi wala siya sa relevant range or wala siya sa normal production or operations ng business mo. And kasi sabi nga, extremely high 
or extremely low na data siya. Nasa abnormal distance siya from other data. So, it should be ignored because it may, dis it may disrupt the computation. So, dun tayo sa second highest, which is um, 38 patients. 38 patients and with a cost of 30,400. Tapos, October, lowest natin. No. Kapag dalawa yung lowest level, for example, pareho nga silang 22 patients, we have to consider prudence here. So, PPDI natin yung mas mababang amount since lowest activity level na rin naman ang hinahanap natin. So, 22 patients with 25,000 600 na cost. Then, estimate na natin yung uh, variable cost and the fixed cost niya. Variable cost per unit, 30,400 less 25,600, then 38 patients less 22 patients, then divide natin C, 4,800 na makukuha from the first solving, no? Over 16 patients dahil yun yung change sa uh, level ng ano nila, admission. Then, ang variable cost per unit will be 300 pesos. Tapos, ka-calculate natin si total fixed cost. So, let's take um, A is equal to Y minus BX. So, Y is 30,400 less, syempre, mo multiply muna natin 300 multiplied by 38 patients. So, we'll have 11,400. So, ide-deduct natin yun kay total cost, which is 30,400. And then, ito na yung um, fixed cost natin na 19,000 pesos. Using the lowest level of activity, same pa rin naman ang makukuha natin. So, meron na tayong equation form na y is equal to 19,000 plus 300x. So, x kasi mababago-bago pa yan. Pero, yung 19,300, siya na talaga yung gagamitin sa production or dun sa operations. Um, pasadahan natin yung scatter graph method. Scatter graph method, matrabaho siya, pero mas accurate ang results niya kumpara kay high and low method. Graphical ang pag-present sa kanya. So, sinaseparate ang fixed and the variable cost here. It is considering all the data points na meron. Hindi lang yung highest at saka yung lowest. So, lahat ng observed na data, pinaplot sila sa isang graph. Tapos, um, uh, depende sa judgment ng uh, ana analyst or ng tumitingin, nag-project uh, sila ng uh, regression line. Yun. Tapos, if you fit yun dun sa mga nakaplot na points doon sa graph na nakabase din dun sa information or yung number ng production sa yung cost. Tapos, um, ang disadvantage lang nito, yung pag-fit ng line sa graph, subjective siya. Depende talaga siya sa tao. So, iba-iba yung lalabas kasi iba-iba yung titingin. Iyon. Tapos, hindi rin siya nakakapagbigay ng exact extent of correlation and difficult to do if there are several independent variables or cost driver na gagamitin. Pero ang advantage niya, mas madali siyang ma maintindihan and i-apply. Tapos, yun nga, ginagamit niya lahat ng data points unlike high and low method na na-omit yung ibang info or data. Tapos, mas accurate ang results saka yung outliers or values values ng mga extreme items madali mong nakikita dahil magpo-plot ka ng lines tapos yung isa ang layo-layo so alam mo outlier yun alam mo i-ignore mo yun tapos when we say least squares regression naman ito um para siyang ano eh mathematical ano statistical siya na technique para ma-investigate ang association or connection between the dependent or the cost and the independent variables or the activity. And then, for estimation nga siya ng mixed cost, 
ginagamit niya rin lahat ng data points. Pero, among the three, or pag para mo rin siya dun sa dalawang nauna, siya pa rin ang best. Kasi, mas accurate yung nakukuha niya dahil gumagamit na siya ng mathematics, no? Para makuha yung best possible fit of the line to the data points. This, uh, that it is determining the line para sa lahat ng observations and ma-minimize yung sum ng mga square deviations between the cost line and the data points. So, yun. Ang disadvantage niya lang, masyadong strict yung assumptions na kailangan niya for, para maging uh, valid ang results. And then, if an outlier is present, hindi niya ini-ignore. So, nakaka-affect siya adversely dun sa results. Tapos, ang advantage niya, ginagamit niya lahat ng data points and then, madali rin siyang gamitin. Lalo with computers and calculators. Yun. Pero, sobrang daming gagawin dito pagka least squares.